Welcome to Guitar Search Saturdays. My name's Shane. This is episode 10, the final episode in this season. I thought we'd save the best to last. The best is somewhat debatable when you're talking about anything, but in terms of retail stores in Melbourne, the assortment of guitars at Sky Music is second to none. Not only does Sky Music carry a huge assortment of budget guitars, it also stocks some top shelf gear. If you're watching and you're also a left-handed guitarist, you're gonna love this shop. Let's go in and take a look. While these three guitars at the front all have Fender on the headstock, they're actually made in China. That one in the middle cops a lot of grief online based on its finish. I actually kind of like the color. I think it looks pretty cool. That thin line tally on the left looks pretty awesome with its P90s. These kind of guitars are actually pretty great for beginners. The two-tone sunburst guitar poking its head through the back there is actually a Squire Classic Vibe 50 Strat. Awesome guitars. Some of the best playing I've ever heard live was done with one of those guitars. I'll post a link in the cards. As I mentioned at the start, this shop has absolutely everything. Check out this range of SGs. They have one of about every type. Epiphone guitars nowadays are built extremely well. Bang for buck, I think you're getting a great guitar with most Epiphones. Tone-wise, between an Epiphone and a Gibson, I'm not sure there's that much difference between them. They both might be using the same tone woods. This black guitar is actually an Epiphone Sheraton 2. These guitars sound and look spectacular, and in the hand, they absolutely feel amazing as well. I'd rate these as highly as some of the better Gibson guitars I've played over the years. If you're looking for a beast of a blues guitar, you can't go wrong with an Epiphone Casino. They're loaded with two single coil pickups and they absolutely sing. These are one of my favorite Epiphone guitars of all time and if I ever run into one that's a lefty, it'll be a sad day for the wallet. Please remain calm. We have our first official lefty sighting. Not only is there one lefty, there's a full wall of left-handed guitars and it's all great stuff. Starting from the bottom right, we have a red Hagstrom guitar. These aren't bad. I had a chance to play a friend's one of these live a while back and I've got to say I really got into the bridge pickup. The neck pickup was okay, but the bridge pickup absolutely sunk. That big orange guitar is actually a Gretsch. I had a chance to pick up a few of these at Jerry's Lefty Guitars quite some time ago. They sound and look spectacular. Only thing is, for short ass like me, they're a little bit too big. Above that is the Chet Atkins Gretsch. Killer. I had a chance to play this particular Epiphone just testing out an amp a while back, and I've got to say the pickup sounded amazing. We also have a blue Mexican Strat and a Squire Telecaster. That USA Butterscotch Tally in the middle is one of the new series of tallies, and I actually had a chance to play it and it sounded spectacular. It's also extremely light. The new neck profiles feel great in the hands. In my opinion, it feels a little bit more like a custom shop guitar. This new neck profile is definitely an upgrade in my opinion. It feels great. On the right of the Telecaster, we have a Mayton Master Sound electric guitar. For those overseas who might not be familiar with Mayton, Mayton actually makes some of our best acoustic guitars in Australia. They also make some killer electric guitars. What I love about this particular Mayton, it kind of reminds me of a Les Paul in the body, but it feels like my 52 tally in the hand. The neck pickup is actually a single coil. The bridge pickup can also be split between humbucker and single coil mode or split coil mode. And man, it sounds absolutely great. I had a funny, funny feeling when I was shooting this video that I'd go back and try out that Mayton. That's the particular guitar I ended up swapping for the Mustang GT. Awesome. How cool is the tailpiece on this? 
This really is the local lefty heaven for us Southpaws. Check out the range of acoustic guitars. They have everything from Takamini to Maiton to Epiphone and lots more. There's something really cool about these mini Maitons. These are kind of like three quarter size guitars, maybe even smaller. They're physically a whole lot smaller than a regular acoustic guitar. Plugged in, they sound huge. I've always said the strength of Maiton acoustic guitars is how great they sound plugged into a PA system. If you're just playing acoustically, maybe a mini Maiton or something similar wouldn't be what you should go for. They'll never sound quite as big as a full bodied acoustic guitar. Hey, cool, it's my old Epiphone acoustic guitar. While this served a really great purpose for me recording, unfortunately it sat under the bed in hibernation. These jumbo Epiphone guitars not only look awesome, they sound great for the kind of money you spend. You'd be hard pressed to beat this in terms of price and performance. Hey, cool, a Roland Jazz Chorus 40. Check this out, there's guitars wall to wall here. I absolutely dig it. Just so you know, this isn't even half of them. What we're looking at right here is a rack of Hagstrom electric guitars. While they might not be the most unique looking guitars on the planet, <coughs> Les Pauls, they still look pretty awesome. It's funny how so many other guitar companies copy the classics. Maybe copy isn't the right word, but they take a lot of inspiration. Let's just put it that way. It's kind of like how blues guitarists like myself and other players will take inspiration in quotation from other guitar players. Last time I went shopping with my friend Rick, or at least he went shopping and I followed him, I got a chance to test out that black custom shop Telecaster. I gotta say, it absolutely sounded amazing. The only problem with it is I'm not really into relic instruments. Not only that, custom shop guitars in Australia cost a fortune. You'd be looking somewhere between four and five grand. Rick, if you're watching, you should work in a music store, mate. If you ever decide not to be a doctor, <laughs> work in a music store. Your sales tactics are unbelievably great. <laughs> I was plugged into a bog standard Fender Blues Deluxe amplifier, one of my favorite amps for just great cleans. Let me know what you honestly think of the look and sound of that guitar. I think it sounds pretty wild. If you like Gibson guitars, check this out. This is simply amazing. There's so much good stuff going on in this particular picture. Most of these are custom shop Gibson guitars. I'm going to shut up for a minute here and just let you check them out. If you've listened to any of my discussions regarding the Les Paul Studio model guitars, you know I've given them a little bit of a hard time, but it was justifiably so. I have a feeling some of those criticisms might just be the fact that I'm a lefty, and maybe Gibson doesn't actually have someone who's left-hander working at their factory testing the guitars. I'm not too sure. Either way, this series of Les Paul Studio guitars with P90s look amazing. 
To make this video a little bit more interactive, I've put up a survey in the cards regarding Les Paul Studios. The question is simply relating to if you've owned one, what's your experience with it? Wow, that's the first time I've ever seen an ES-335 in that color. How's the F-holes? They're more like diamonds. This photo makes me want to draw. That guitar in the middle looks fantastic. I also love the ES-339s below them. I really wish that Gibson or Epiphone made these guitars in a lefty. It's like walking around a guitar gallery. As I took a walk over to the other side of the shop, I noticed we have some more Maiton Master Sound electric guitars. I'm not 100% sure if you can get Maiton Master Sound electric guitars outside of Australia or not, but if you can, go check them out. I can highly vouch for them. What you're seeing here is essentially the rest of the Maiton electric guitar range for the lucky right-handed players out there. How cool is that one with the dual P90s? Holy crap, check out this. <laughs> Man, believe it or not, this entire wall is just Gretsch guitars. As I mentioned earlier, there's very few shops I've ever been in anywhere in the world that stocks this much great stuff. On the standing rack, we have even more Hagstroms. While I'm totally digging the vibe, the color, and the look of this particular instrument, the only problem with it is it looks like you may also require an engineering degree to work out what those toggle switches do. Not having a regular toggle switch to change pickups is a little bit of a deal breaker. Here's perhaps a better view of all the Maiton electric guitars we just saw earlier. I'm pretty sure this would be the entire range of Gretsch guitars, or very close to, in every color available. There's multiple versions of the Chet Atkins guitar in different colors, for example. Some of my favorite playing of Chet Atkins was the stuff he did with Jerry Reed. It's just simply amazing. I'll also post a link to that in the cards. Man, I don't know about you, but I'd be kind of scared to take something this beautiful to a gig. <laughs> Last thing you'd want is someone else knocking it over. Not only have we seen some amazing guitars so far, there's more great stuff on the way. Coming up in a moment, I'll walk you through what I call the million dollar wall. It's just a name I gave it after realizing they had so many Paul Reed Smiths. PRS guitars are like visual eye candy. They definitely capture your attention. Even these PRS SE models look fantastic. I think a lot of people who play a Les Paul or a Strat go to the PRS guitar hoping it will replace them. I think they have their own vibe going on. So my suggestion is if you are thinking of buying a PRS, take your old guitars in for a comparison. It won't quite do what a Strat does. It won't quite do what a Les Paul does. It does its own thing. So keep that in mind. I kind of like that about them. Excluding the SE models, there has to be at least 30 PRS guitars. Here's something I don't see every day. It's PRS Custom 50 head and box. I remember trying the PRS amps out when they first came out. I wasn't overly blown away, but they did sound pretty good. That said, I definitely haven't tried either of these two. Out of the corner of my eye, I happen to spot a red lefty PRS. Awesome. Check out these Charvel guitars. The 1980s has come back in full force. You don't often see guitars in these colors, unless you're watching a 1980s hair metal band. 
In terms of instrument quality, they actually look pretty cool. I'd be way too scared to take one of these off the wall just based on the looks I'd get. <laughs> That faded top looks pretty wild. Alright, visually I'm almost converted. These three are my personal favourites hands down. I think they look great. I love that faded kind of vibe. For some reason the one in the middle reminds me of an old pair of jeans. I dig it. Value for money, the PRS SE guitars have to be up there with some of the best of them. Here's another guitar that PRS decided not to make in a lefty. I don't know why. I might be Mr. Bland when it comes to guitar choices, but I actually prefer the look of the SE range, these two in particular, over most of the other guitars that we've seen so far. These look like quality instruments, and from what I've been told from my righty friends, they play extremely great also. Yeah, I don't know, there's not a lot in it to be honest, both finishes look great. There's a number of these dark green guitars floating around this shop and they've all looked really good. It seems that Jackson guitars are also bringing back the 1980s vibe in full force. It's crazy to see so many neon colours. This in by no means takes away from the quality of their guitars, just an observation. Hanging up on the wall we have some EVH guitars. This is something else I don't see in too many other shops. Recently I was in another shop with one of my good friends and he picked that particular guitar up and had a play and it sounded great. The only thing is they're kind of expensive for a guitar made in Asia. I thought it was time to go in and check out their amplifiers. Seriously this wall of Marshall amps kind of makes me feel even shorter than I am. <laughs> While there's not a huge range of actual brands in this particular shop when it comes to amplifiers, if you're a Fender or a Marshall fan, or even a Roland fan, you're gonna dig this store. Hey, rip my old Super Reverb, or at least one just like it. I get asked my opinion on the Fender Bass Breaker amps all of the time. My favourite one out of the entire range is the 15. I love the fact that it's got reverb and you don't even need to run pedals, the drive just sounds spectacular. If you're into clean tones, go for the Fender Blues Junior, but if you want heavier tones with more mids, the Bass Breaker 15 is awesome. This might look like any other Hot Rod Deluxe, but this is actually one of the new ones made in China. Overall, the tone isn't that much difference. I did see that they've used different types of tubes in the back, and they do rattle quite a bit. Anytime you buy an amp and it has tubes that rattle, odds are the tubes aren't great. Replace them, it should clean up that sound. On the right of the Fender Supersonic 22, we actually have a George Benson Hot Rod Deluxe. I hear these particular amplifiers stay a lot more clean and are a little less aggressive. I guess it's based on the custom speaker, as well as the slightly different tube preamp configuration. Fender have changed up the color of the tweed on the Blues Deluxe amps and it looks really, really cool. There's also a selection of crank amps, which I'm totally unfamiliar with. Maybe because they're probably aimed at metal players. 
These are some tidy looking martial ants. I totally dig the Tolex and look of these as well. Sky Music always has a plethora of custom shop guitars and higher end Fender stuff. There's not an SX in sight. Do you need a guitar with more bling? Check out this gold telly. <laughs> Believe it or not, it also comes in numerous other colors, including the sparkles. As I mentioned, I'm not a huge fan of heavily relicked instruments. This yellow Telecaster, they got it right. My friend Rick actually picked up one of these. Straight off the shelf, this is one of the nicest tellies I've ever heard. That said, he kind of makes everything sound good. <laughs> Visually, this guitar looks amazing, and it's one of the few relic tellies that could sway me over to the relic dark side. Also, what do you think of that orange tally? Let me know in the comments. As you can see, they have everything that you could possibly want in terms of Fender gear, if you're right, of course, but there's lots to choose from. It's great to see Fender also branching out with some unique colors. They've been doing the same thing for so long, it's actually cool to see something a little bit different. Just when you think you've seen all the Fender stuff that they've got, you turn around and there's another two walls. Check out these two American Special Telecasters. This is the Deluxe Shawbucker guitar. It actually features two humbuckers by Tim Shaw. Part of this new design is the treble bleed mod. I think this is kind of essential when you're talking about Fender humbuckers. For those who don't know what the treble bleed is, it essentially lets all of your high end to pass through the signal even with your guitar volume down. Fender guitars get a little bit more rolled off in the highs the further you turn your guitar volume down. Believe it or not though, the mod's worth about three bucks. And that wraps up another Guitar Search Saturday. Sky Music, as you can tell, has lots of great guitars. It's a little bit of a shame their website doesn't have all the information on the guitars in their shop, but as you can see, there's so much stuff in here, it's just absolutely worth a visit. I appreciate all the feedback for the first season of Guitar Search Saturdays, which has finally come to a close. Out of all of the 10 episodes, the only two things I picked up was the first Silver Stripe Bandit I saw in episode one at the Cash Converters, as well as my most recent acquisition, which happened after the time of filming, being the Mayton Master Sound Electric Guitar. I have some pretty exciting and cool plans for the next series of Guitar Search Saturdays. I'm gonna take a few weeks off and make sure the next season is even better. If you do have any suggestions for future episodes, please let me know. As always, thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you all soon.